Nothing can stop us Nothing can hold us down Death is defeated Jesus, you have overcome Hey! Come on, sing it Nothing can stop us
Jesus, you have overcome. Yes, he's alive in us. He's shining on us. the light. We're not going to sleep any longer, God. Wake us, wake us, wake us. Yes. Oh, I'm so thankful for the Holy Spirit.
off of all the stuff because it doesn't matter what we're seeing or hearing out there maybe it's in, even in your own personal face situation God is faithful He's faithful this song, it, it meant a lot to me. When we were going through that with Ethan, I sang this song about every day. Some of you in here, you've been given a bad report. The devil's throwing a bomb at you. And unless you've been there, you don't know what they're going through, but when you've had a bomb go off in your life, and you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I know one person was in prayer on Saturday morning and got just diagnosed with breast cancer. You don't, you say, well, you know, we dismiss that. Oh, well, I'm praying for you, sister. You don't know what it's like to be the one that had the bomb blown off on you. So to that sister this morning, I say, I bless you in Jesus' name. I pray that you be encouraged in Jesus' name. Because it doesn't matter what you feel. And it doesn't matter what you see. It doesn't matter because the doctors aren't going to give you any hope. You got to look to Jesus tonight. So tonight... If that's you, if you've been, if the devil's throwing a bomb in your life and you don't know what you're going to do, you don't know where, to, you know where to turn. It's easier said than done, but would you, Nicole, you go right ahead and do what you're going to do, but maybe tonight you need to come up here and let us surround you and let you know we're with you and we're going to pray you through and you're going to make it, amen, because it doesn't matter. God cannot be taken off that throne. Our Heavenly Father loves you. Praise God. Be encouraged. Be encouraged tonight. In Jesus' name. You know, I hear him say, don't be afraid. Just believe. Cast it off. <laughs> don't be afraid. Just believe. Don't be afraid. Just believe. Can you see Jarius? Can you see him? All hope. He thought, Jesus is coming. Everything's going to be all right. Have you ever had, have you have ever had like a disruption and a sucker punch where it knocks the breath out of you and you think, what now? I'm hearing him say, don't be afraid. Just believe. Just believe. No fear. Say, it doesn't matter what I feel. It doesn't matter what Come on, sing it. My hope will always be in your promises to me. Now I'm casting out all fear, for your love has set me free. My hope will always be in your promises. There's some 
young people, some children who, who may be really going through some things. I'm going to call you children for it. I'm going to tell you, God sees you. Your faith is stronger than ours. I'm going to tell you, he tells us to have childlike faith. Some of you children, there's things you're seeing and you're hearing in your homes. And there's things that you're seeing and you're hearing at school and it's hurting you. I'm going to call you forth tonight. Come on up here to the altar. Because God wants to love on you. The Lord wants to love on you. Every child, come on up. Come on up. We're going to sing it. I want you to sing it with me. Come on, come on. Come on, say it. Say it. It doesn't matter what I feel. It doesn't matter what I see, my hope will always be in your promises to me. Now I'm casting out all fear, for your love has set me free. My hope will always be in your promises to me. It doesn't matter what. in time as being a, a generation that, that can lead this next generation into the light. Oh, how we've been an example of darkness. Oh, that we would raise up and be a generation that would be an example of light. 
Father, we just come to you right now in the name of Jesus. God, I say let the next generation arise, God. God, may they not be asleep like the church of this generation, God, but may they awaken in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you would over, uh, overshadow him, God. God, I pray that your anointing would be greater than what it was on Peter. That when he walked by, God, people brought out the sick to be healed, God. I pray for an overshadowing of this generation. God, that not by one that they would seek the pulpit, but they would seek the prayer closet, oh God. So that everywhere they go, God, that it's only you getting the glory, God. Father, I pray that you'd start to mend their hearts at a young age, God. God, I pray that you'd turn that home situation around, God. That where all they hear is bickering and complaining when they go home from school, God. Father, I pray that you would use them to be an example for mom and dad. To draw them unto salvation and back into the kingdom, God. Father, we just pray right now over these children. God, we declare that the light cannot be scared of darkness any longer. That light's called to expose darkness. But how can we expose something that we're scared of? So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray boldness would be uh, impartated in these children. I pray a hunger and thirst for righteousness be shaken and alive in these children, God. Father, I pray as you had, the Bible said that your hand was established on David. Father, I pray that this generation, that your hand would be established on each and every one of them in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I thank you that you knew them before they were in their mother's womb. But you had a plan for them, and that was one to prosper, God. Father, we thank you that you set them apart a long time ago. That you had conversation with them, God. Yeah, as a spirit, you told them what they were to do when they came to earth, God. And that was to shake hell and fill heaven, God. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that there's a fresh anointing being released. God, we stand here, and we won't move until you anoint these children, God. As Samuel said, is there not one? Is there not one out there? And he called David in and he said, we will stand here until he comes. Father, I pray right now that the oil starts to flow, God. I pray that their lampstand would overflow at a young age, God. God, I pray as they open up the word, it be a rhema word, God. That you take the lid off of it, Father. And it would have burned in their spirit at a young age, God. That they would go into their schools, God, and expose all darkness. They, that they would go into the schools, God, and lay hands on the sick and see them recover, God. I pray that they would go into the schools preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, the death, the burial, and the resurrection, and about how you, God, sent Jesus to go and defeat hell, death, and the grave. And that the same power that raised Jesus lives in each and every one of them, no matter how young they are, God. So, Father, right now we declare an overshadowing over them. God, we pray for that home situation that you would step in and use them as light of the world, God. That they would not conform to this world, but they would be transformed by the renewing of their mind, God. That they would open up the gospel. They would get, they would be drawn to the Bible. They would see it there sitting at their house, God. And that you would give them the wisdom and the knowledge to open it up and read it and it would come alive and become who they are, not what they do, God. So, Father, we just pray right now. We lift up Pastor Brian and Susan to you, God. God, I pray that you give a wisdom and a servant in these last days of how to raise this generation, God. Father, I pray that your hand would be upon them. You continue to give them ears to hear and eyes to see, God, of how you want this next generation to be raised, God. God, may we be examples as Christians. May they see us love people. May they see, the, may they see us love others, God. May they not see us talking about them at home in private. May they not see us tearing people down at the dinner table. But God, I pray that we would put the cell phones down at the dinner table as parents. And then we would start to talk to our children. Start declaring that the, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. To let them know, God, that with you all things are possible. That they can do all things through Christ that gives them strength, God. That these aren't just fancy words, but it's the Bible. And that it's true. If it was true then, it's true now, God. Father, I pray that you would encourage them. God, I command every demon on assignment. I bind them in the name of Jesus over their life, God. We bind every stronghold. We tear it down. We cut axe to the root. And we pull it up today in the name of Jesus. And God, we pray that they would be planted in the Word of God. That they would burn for the things of the kingdom, God. 
that they would inherit they would inherit the kingdom that they would not lose their crown God but they would hold on and finish the race God Father I pray that this generation would bear more fruit than we've ever seen God I pray that they would bear fruit you said they would know us by our fruit God so Father I pray that when you start to prune them they would understand it that when you start to cut God The Bible says that you are the vine and we are the branches. And from apart from you, we can do nothing. But the reason that you you cut us, God, and that you cut our branches and trim us back is so we can bear more fruit. I pray that they would understand that it's in love, God. That they wouldn't get mad at you, but that they would trust you, God. When they couldn't trace you, they would trust you, Father. Father, we pray that this generation would be that of Job where you would pour out your spirit on all flesh, God. God, I pray that the prophetic be released at a young age. I pray, God, that they can prophesy over their friends at school, God. God, they say we can't go into the school and pray. But God, I pray that you use these children to go in there and pray. They can't stop them from going in there and praying, God. Father, I pray that you would release your hand upon them and they would get baptized in the Holy Ghost. I pray that they would get their prayer language at a young age. I pray that they would use it to defeat darkness in the name of Jesus. God, baptize them fresh and anew today, God. God, may they abide in you and your word abide in them, God. Father, may they walk in everywhere the soles of their feet hit, God. May it be for your glory. God, if those things in the past were glorious, how much more will this generation be glorious? They're called, we declare they're called to go from glory to glory, God. God, we find that spirit of backsliding in their generation. That they wouldn't dibble and dabble in church. One foot over here, one foot over there. God, I declare they're not fence riders any longer. That they would be 100% God, sold out for you. God, I pray right now that you would just start to give them dreams that they wouldn't be scared. They would fear you, Lord, but they would want to walk with you. They would understand, God, that you love them, that you sent Jesus to die for them. You sent Jesus to die for me, and I'm thankful for that, God. I wish I'd have got it at this age, God. I wish I would have got it at this age, God. But God, what man can do in a thousand years, trying and plowing, you can do in a minute, God. You can do in a second, oh God. God, I pray for every door that they're called to go through open all by itself, Father. I pray for the child that's battling depression. I pray for that kid who's battling depression. That here's mom and dad arguing. They may be even separated. God, I pray that you would speak to their heart to know that Romans 8.28 declares that everything works together for our good. And that God, they can start to pray peace in that home. And that you are faithful to step in, God. That if that nobody else will stand up and be the light, you call them to stand up and be the light to their moms and their dads, Father. Father, we just pray right now. Saturate every fiber of their being, God, with resurrection power of the Holy Spirit. God, I pray they raise the dead. They're not, they're not, and when people try to raise up a tongue against them, God, that you would condemn it. When they try to say that they're different, they are different but it's the right difference. That they're called to expose darkness and not be afraid. God, may I bind the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus that tries to grip them. We bind that spirit in the name of Jesus and we declare that you can walk free in his presence. Because the Bible said he never leave you nor forsake you. That you can walk with God in the cool of the day, holding his hand. And then with him, he said, if you abide in me, he said, those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. He said, those who dwell. He didn't say who those who visit the secret place. You kids hear me. You seek the prayer room. Don't seek the pulpit. Your school is the pulpit. Your house is the pulpit. You seek the word. You don't have to worry about preaching because when you seek the prayer closet, he will be all over you. It says he'll overshadow you. The preach, the preach will automatically come upon you. And then you'll be, it won't be some fancy words. It won't be fancy words. It'll be the power of Jesus Christ. Because you're abiding. Never stop abiding, young man. Never stop abiding. He will overshadow you. He said, I'll cover you with my wings. 
that means his authority you be humble you remain under his authority you let him lead and guide you you stay in that secret place and you'll be able to hear don't just pray learn to fast and pray this generation ain't gonna get it just praying you gotta fast and pray you gotta surrender the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force you're going to have to give up some things if you want to see the kingdom of God advance the problem with the world today we don't want to give up TV we don't want to give up our job making more money we'd rather stay after and work late on a job to buy more things but those things will rust but he has a crown for you he has a crown that won't rust he has a crown for you don't lose the crown don't listen to these preachers that tell you that you can't lose your salvation. Let me tell you something. Why did the Bible say don't hold on to your crown? And don't think you're not subject to it. He sifted Peter. He asked Jesus and Jesus allowed him, the devil, to sift Peter. But Peter made it. Peter made it. You're going to make it. Man of God, there's a call on your life. I told you this the other day there's a call on your life I know you can hear him you keep seeking him you seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you seek ye first Father in the name of Jesus I pray for fire shut up in his bones God God I pray for the gifts of the spirit to be released at a young age in the name of Jesus God I thank you Lord for a mom and dad that takes him into your presence God Father, we just pray and declare right now, no weapon formed against him shall prosper. We declare, God, that he will abide in you and your word will abide in him. God, that he wouldn't have to come up with some fancy words or persuasive words, but the words will abide in him. That when he can just open up his mouth, it comes out like rivers of living water. God, I pray that you catapult him. I pray that you catapult him into the next generation. That you anoint him and that you seal him with your glory. Father, I pray, God, that you'd overshadow him with greatness. And God, I pray that he'd be humble. I pray that he'd be humble. And that he knows that it's not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, saith the Lord. Father, I thank you for this young man. I pray that he wouldn't waver in his faith. I pray that he wouldn't be lukewarm. God, you said I'd rather him be hot or cold and not lukewarm because you want to spew him out of your mouth. Father, I pray that he wouldn't be cold or lukewarm, but he'd be on fire for the things of the kingdom, God. I pray that he'd be anointed with the oil of David, a fresh oil, God. That he would slay the giants before him, God. That he would slay the giants of his generation. Arise, David. Arise, David. Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. God, I pray that they wouldn't lose their crown. God, I pray that not only his children would lose their crown, but everyone in this room wouldn't lose their crown. See, I like to just blaze a fire where I go. I don't like to go to this church and start a fire. Go over here to this church and start a fire. Go to this one and start a fire because guess what? As you jump around, that fire's gonna go out. I'm, I leave this fire, now both of them went out. Then I gotta come over here and rekindle again, but by the time I do that, that fire over there's out. But if you'll stay planted, it may not be here. Find out where God wants you and blaze a trail for Almighty God and burn for Him. Burn for Him. There's where His glory will be. That's where His glory will be. If you keep leaving the fire, it's going to go out. Get rooted. If you're not rooted, you're going to lose your crown at some point. But Father, we just thank you right now. We thank you for this time, God. Father, I pray that anybody under the sound of my voice, I pray that they would run to the altar, God. Father, I pray by the, by the authority of Jesus Christ, you said ask anything in my name. In your name is the key, God. God, I pray that if anybody's lost, that they would run to the altar. They wouldn't be moved by man's opinion of them. None of us got it together. None of us have it together. We're all sinners that fall short of the glory of God. Father, we're not here to put them down, but we'll meet them right here to lift them up, God. Father, but I pray that you give them strength to make it. That they wouldn't even, they wouldn't even practice going to hell. They wouldn't even risk going to hell. I know that hell ain't popular, 
preaching fire in popular. I'm not trying to tell you that you're going to hell. I'm just telling you the reality is if you don't know Jesus Christ and you've not accepted him as your Lord and Savior or if you've walked away from him, you need to get it under the blood. So if you're lost, come. Come in the name of Jesus. We bind those demons right now in the name of Jesus. We bind those demons that are in your ear in the name of Jesus. Demons, Jesus you knew, Paul you knew. I pray that you know me and I pray that I'm known in the throne and that's it. But I command you in the name of Jesus by the authority of the blood, come forth and receive your salvation. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. Don't wait. It's not worth it. You could go out there and get hit. Don't risk it. Heaven is already paid for. It's already paid for by the blood of Jesus. You just got to come down here and ask for forgiveness and confess it. He said, if you confess it to me, to men, I'll confess you before the Father. But if you don't acknowledge me in front of men, he'll deny you in front of the Father. Don't risk it. It's not worth it. Come running now. Come now. Don't worry about the opinions. Come running. If there's something that maybe you was mad at your wife earlier, maybe you were talking down to her this week, maybe you were telling dirty jokes at work as Nicole was talking about, maybe you're in some shady business deals, come running. Come running. If you just want prayer for healing, come running. He's able. He's able. Hallelujah.
will shine His glory. <laughs> Arise, shine for your light has come. Arise, shine for your light has come. In the upper room there was 120 disciples of Jesus if you'll remember 500 followed him saw him raised from the dead a few days later there was only 120 in the upper room but they were all in that same place in one accord the Bible says praying praying I wonder if there was any of the 120 that didn't really want to pray they just did it out of obedience I wonder if any of them felt like there was things that they needed to be doing back home because they were there for 10 days I just wonder if there was some people that were maybe hungry and wanting to go out and get something at the specific time that the Lord was going to drop the Holy Spirit in there. But they weren't. They were participating. It's so important that everyone participates. That there be total unity in the house. There's got to be unity because the Bible says a house divided against itself cannot stand. Not only are we standing, but we're marching forward. In Jesus' name. But there's a lot of people that feel that they can't participate for whatever reason. They're unworthy. They haven't got all the sin out of their life. Uh, they don't have any history. They don't know how. They think they'll look foolish. Whatever it is. Physical ailments. Mental ailments. But let me tell you what. we got to get an expectation. 
that God can do anything that he wants to do in any one of us. No matter what our background, no matter what our race or creed or color or whatever, no matter what we've learned in Sunday school, no matter if it was catechism when we were Catholic, it doesn't matter. If we're an open vessel, God will fill it. In fact, he filled water pots in the very first miracle of the Bible that were contaminated. They were for washing dirty hands, and he filled them and made them full of new wine. So that the, the, the king of the feast said, it's the best wine we've got. The best tasting juice we've got. You saved it for last. But sometimes people need help. And that's why there were four men in the Bible that took their lame friend on a, on a mat and c- carried him up to the roof and cut a hole in the roof and let him down so that Jesus could touch him. Jesus said, I, he saw their faith, their faith. Maybe the guy on the mat had some faith, but he also saw the other guy's faith. We've got to get an expectation that God can do anything he wants to do. If only we can get to him. If only we can bring our friend to him. If only we can bring our family member to him. If we bring him to him, he will be healed. She will be healed. They will be touched. There's no exception. God does not, he's not a respecter of persons. If he sees that faith, he'll react. And I just feel like there's people in here that just don't have that expectation that just right now feel like, I can't get to Jesus on my own. We're here for you. Your brothers and sisters are here for you. We're a family. We stick closer. I want you to just, if you are feeling that in yourself, there is no condemnation in Christ. No condemnation. There's there's people in this congregation right now if you knew their background if you knew what was going on in their life in the past you would you would be shocked and we don't have to bring it out we're not here to air dirty laundry but the reason that I say that is because you're no exception you're no farther than anybody else has been you're no dirtier than anybody else has been you're no less obedient than anybody else has been so I want you to grab a neighbor grab a friend tap the person in front of you or behind you as we sing this next song and I ask just tell them go to the altar with me carry me to Jesus they'll do it won't you do it will you do it if somebody taps you on the shoulder will you come up here with them if somebody asks you for help will you bring them to the altar I'm asking you will you no exceptions even if this person you can't stand them maybe they did you wrong that's exactly why you should bring them to the altar I come against anything that would hinder us in Jesus' name. I break every bondage that's holding people back in Jesus' name. I untie every fetter that's holding people back in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, there's freedom in the house. Anything that would keep us from being free, I bind in the name of Jesus. Any mental stronghold, I come against it right now and bring it down in the name of Jesus. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, we are free. Because the one who came and died for us has set us free. Not because we've done anything in our own body, because he's done it in us. Hallelujah. 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 He purchased it for the great price. He wants us to be free. He desires that we be free, radically free saved and free to serve that's what he wants and if you're not there you can get there because all you need to do is submit yourself to God resist the devil and he will flee from you sometimes we can't resist because we're weak we need help Jesus said he knows exactly what it is he can be touched with the feelings of your infirmities with all of your weaknesses and trials and temptations he's already gone through them and already been victorious and now he has purchased that freedom for you he wants you to have it so if that's you I want you to tap your neighbor grab a friend go across to somebody you know whatever it will take to help you get to Jesus
second one tonight. Not only did Freddie give his life to Jesus, but so did Charles. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, he's good. He's so good. Three kids got saved in kids' church this morning. Hallelujah. God's doing the work. Okay. Well, you can go ahead and love on somebody, and then you can be seated. Anybody going uh, around the altar, stay as long as you want. Just hang out. It's fine. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Nothing like obeying God. Lives changed. People's hearts touched. Hey, blind eyes opened. Spiritual blindness being unveiled in Jesus' name. Falling off like scales. Enemies try to hold people in darkness for too long. These little kids down here are going to shine like lights in their schools. You ever had God tell you to do something and you didn't do it and later on you wish you had a... Hey, me too. I remember one time. I'll never forget it. I was going through a real bad situation in my life, and my boss at the time took me out to lunch. And we were talking. He said, you know what? You really impressed me. I'm thinking, what, really? <laughs> me? And he said, yeah, it seems like the harder it gets, the tougher you are. And I said, well, glory to God. And he said, I'm not really into religion. I'm not very religious, he said. And the Holy Spirit spoke up to me, and he said, me neither. And I was supposed to say that, you know, me neither. But I'm thinking, wait a minute, that does not going to make any sense to him. And I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Oh, but I've repented. The Lord's forgiven me. But I've learned that when he tells you to do something or when he tells you to speak something or when he tells you to uh, whatever it is, that if we do it, we won't have any regrets. Even if it sounds really almost stupid, you know, irrational, we should go ahead and obey the Holy Spirit. Irregardless of our own understanding. There was a little boy that used to come down around here. And man, he had so much hair. I can't remember his name, but I just remember him, this dude that had all the hair. <laughs> he was cute. Man, he had a lot of hair. Well, anyway, he, he had the word in him. And one time he was uh, talking to Elmer one time. And Elmer said something. And he said, well, if you hesitate, you will debate. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Elmer said he's never forgotten it. If you hesitate, you will debate. Can I get a witness? Let's be quick to obey. Amen. Let's be quick to obey. I've got a couple announcements. You can get your offerings ready if you weren't able to do that this morning. And uh, Now we do tithes and offerings here. We don't belong to a denomination that's paying our bills. We all do it together. Amen. This is a family plan. We take care of the family house and the family business. Right? And whatever God tells us to do, we all do it because we all chip in. It's part of that participation that I talked about. We pray. We worship. We obey. We give. We pray, we love, we do all those things, each and every member among us. So whatever your portion is, I just ask you to be obedient. Don't forget the Haiti shoe boxes. Uh, we need to keep pressing on that. There is baptism next Sunday night. If you need to get baptized, you need to see one of the staff members and we'll arrange to get you that class. Uh, Men's Basketball League, there's a sign up, uh, whatever notebook or whatever it is at the Welcome Center. If you're interested in that, there's a preschool open house on Monday, this coming Monday evening at 5 o'clock. That's right across the street. Uh, remember to pick up your children after class or after class, after worship and uh, the message or whatever God's doing here. Don't linger around. Go send somebody to get your kids. Go get them and then come back. Amen. And then also, uh, Evan Vance and Jeremy McClanahan are going to be preaching under the big top. On Thursday and Friday down in Polka. Actually, it's all, I think it's just past Polka down that way. So if you're available, swing out there and support them and uh, let God lead you. Amen. He's so good to us. He's so faithful. He's so awesome. He's so loving and kind, patient. <laughs> oh, he's so patient. He was so patient with me. He'll be patient with you too. You just keep your heart pure. Protect your heart. Watch out over your heart. Watch what goes in these eyes. What go, watch what goes in these ears. Be careful, little hands, what you do. Be careful, little feet, where you go. For the Father up above is looking down in love. He's looking down in love. So let's go to Him right now in worship and our giving. 
Father, thank you that you trusted us, Lord God, to fund the family business here at Maranatha. Confess, Lord, that we have no lack. I thank you, Lord, for generous people that I can call my brothers and sisters. Lord God, I thank you for the seed that you said that you would give to the sower and bread to the eater. So, Lord, I just ask you to multiply all this seed sown. And I ask you to give back to the sower multiplied, pressed down, shaken together, running over. There there will be no lack in this house or in their uh, lives and in their household. In Jesus' name, amen.
Jesus. Oh, praise God. Let's give thanks for Stephanie Walker giving her heart to Jesus. Hallelujah. I've got, I've got maybe a short thing. Did, okay, I've got maybe a short thing, and then I'm going to dismiss you. Just this one little thing that the Lord, I think, put on my heart. And I might have got some confirmation when Pastor Jay talked about unity. Um, our pastor, he, he teaches us about unity a lot, and don't ever turn a deaf ear to it. It's something that's vital. It's a prayer that Jesus prayed. Jesus prayed, make them one as you and I are one. Those words in itself, he said, make them one as you and I are one. So just a really quick little thing here. If it's all right. The Lord's got me in Ephesians right now. He's, he's, um. He's correcting me. <laughs> so I'm going to start in Ephesians 4, and I'm going to start in, in verse 1. And this is something, and I was, actually, I thought, God, this is so small. I don't know if this is all I got. And now I know why, because it doesn't need to be long, because the Lord had other things. Ephesians 4, chapter 1. Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life. Mm. Paul says, I beg you. To lead a life worthy of your calling. We're all called. We're all called. For you have been called by God. Always be humble. Always be gentle. Be patient with each other. Making allowances for each other's faults because of your love. What does that mean? Making allowances for each other. Give grace. Extend grace to each other. Making allow because of your love, because of the love of Christ in us. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit. Paul's telling them every effort. So it's not something that's just easy and it's just going to happen. We got to work for it. We got to work for it. And it's worth working for. Listen, Maranatha, God has called this body together for such a time as this. <laughs> for such a time as this. And, and he is looking down upon us and he says that we were worth dying for. Well, he's worth working for. United in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. That means no strife, no backbiting, no division. The opposite of, of peace is strife. Strife is quarreling and, and just always kind of having that arg argumentative spirit. So peace, peace, peace. For, I love this. There is one body and one spirit just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. Now, I, I'm going to tell you how the Lord showed me this. And, and many times I, I don't think we clearly understand we're connected whether we want to be or not. <laughs> We're connected. If you, if you envision a body or even yourself, your spirit is there. It's not like there's a little bit of spirit in the hand and a little bit of spirit in your feet. The spirit is in you, all right? Your spirit. It's one. You cannot disconnect that. What connects us is the Holy Spirit. If you envision a body worldwide, the Holy Spirit, the person, not a little bit of spirit here and a little bit of spirit there depositing in, it's one. He's one. There's not different Holy Spirits. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying to you? I don't know if you can see it. I see it almost like a body, and I see a glow of the spirit around that body. It's one. One person. The Holy Spirit. So... We're one body. Do you see that? You may say, well, I don't want to be... It's just stop that stuff. You know? It doesn't matter if you want it. If they're in Jesus, they're connected. <laughs> We're connected. So it's one body, one spirit, just as you've been called to one glorious hope in the, for the future. We're all going to heaven together. 
We're all going to rule and reign with Jesus together. So you might as well begin to learn to love. For there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, in all, and living through all. So that one, he's living through all. See, our brains don't hardly comprehend that. We kind of envision as, you know, a little spirit here and a little spirit there. But he's a person, and he's, and he's one. <laughs> so we're connected. Now, I want to go on down, and, and it talks about how Jesus left gifts to the people. And I'm going to start in verse 9. Or, I'm sorry, verse 11. And he's talking about the gifts, the gifts to the church. Now, these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people, us, to do his work. Ah, yes, there's that word work again. <laughs> Serving, work, and build up the church. Who's the church? Us. The body of Christ. Okay, so, so we got to understand and see this. Pastor talks about the fivefold ministry all the time. It's on his heart. It's the vision he's casting before you because it's heavy on his heart because it's the heart of God. Now we got to understand, you hear him talking about the fivefold ministry. And why is that so? Why is he always? Because it's heavy on his heart because the Lord is saying right here that is to equip God's people to do his work. Okay? That we will continue until we'll, uh, we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will mature, be mature in the Lord. That is God's heart for us. So these gifts, this fivefold ministry, it is to help us to grow up. You've got to start listening and turning an ear to the Word of God. And whatever gift that God is using, it's to equip us. To help build us, to help us develop and grow and be in unity. That is what it's about. So when he's teaching on unity, when our pastor is preaching about unity, do not turn a deaf ear. I pray he continues to pound it and pound it and pound it until we get it. Until we get it. Because we got to love each other. Mm. Measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Do you remember what the Lord gave us this morning? His standard is not low. So it is the job of the pastor, of the teacher, of the apostle, of the prophet, this, uh, of the apostle, this fivefold. It is, it is their responsibility to tell you the truth so that we can hear that word and let it develop in us. Now listen, so that we can do the work of God in love and in unity as one functioning body. One functioning body together. Like, like Jay said, marching together as one. Then we will no longer be immature. That's the cry of the Father's heart right now because time is growing so fast and so near. He don't want us to be childlike in, now in our faith, but not in our actions. So he's saying stop being immature um, so that we won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of doctrine and new teaching that comes along. If we're, if we're really hearing the word and getting in the word and we're listening to the word that, that's coming forth from the pulpit... We're not going to be able to be so tossed so easily by some crazy thing that's going to mislead us. And it's so important because the end days, oh, it's going to rise. And we've got to know the word. We've got to know what God says. Because that misleading doctrine, it's going to get stronger and it's going to get stronger. And, and there's going to come a time when you're going to have to know what the word says. And you're going to have to speak it and do the work of God. But you've got to grow up. So it's these little things that the Lord is saying, let's get rid of. Be in unity. So we won't be influenced by those things. Instead, we will speak the truth in love. Growing in every way more and more like Christ. That's the heart of God. Who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body Fit together perfectly when we submit and surrender to him and as each part does its own special work we all have a part every finger every toe ear eyes now I look at it, it it just helps me to think of it naturally because everybody has a part and we're all connected we're all connected and that body needs to fit perfectly together by being united 
and not allowing division to come in. And so when you hear the word come forth from the pulpit, and it may not be what you want to hear and you may not like it, you know what? Just get your feathers down, smooth them out. <laughs> and just say, Lord, let that change me. Let that change me. Stop getting offended so easily. I told the music department, I've said, you know, there's a spirit of offense that's, that's going to be so strong, but it's not for us. We're not to be offended. Now, we got to let it step on our toes and correct us and then get things right. But we don't need to get offended. Don't get offended with each other. We ain't got time for that mess. Just get over it. We got to be in, together as one. He makes the whole body fit together. Each part does its own special work. It helps the, listen to this, it helps the other parts grow. When we're all doing our part, it's just like if I'm taking care of my body, I'm going to get stronger. I'm going to get healthier. You know what I'm saying? If I'm, if I'm doing my body good, I'm going to get stronger and healthier. It's the same with each other. <laughs> Look at each other as part of your body. Because we are. So we've got to take care of each other. Do you understand? Staying in unity. Don't cut your arm off. You think you're going. No, we don't need to do that. We're connected by the, by the spirit. So we need to treat each other good. Be good, gentle, kind, loving. Oh, treat, treat each other like you would your own self. Just be so good to each other. <laughs> you know, be good to each other. Be kind, loving, gentle. And so it helps the other parts of the body grow. We do that for each other. So that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. That's what the Lord gave me this afternoon. Full of love. And that's really all I have. And I thought, Lord, that's so small. It doesn't seem like much. But I really feel like the Lord, with the word he gave this morning and, and how things went tonight and calling us into light and raising up a generation and raising up an army. And he's wanting all those things. But it comes back to love. It comes back to unity. Amen? Amen. Jay, Pastor Joe, Jay, you got anything? Anybody? Uh, Pastor Joey? Pastor Joey? All right. Well, let's stand. We're going to dismiss. Pastor Terry, you got anything? All right. Wasn't it a good day? I'm thankful. Don't we miss our pastor? We miss our pastor, don't we? We miss him. Just, just bless him. And, and when Miss Tammy gets back, just, just bless him. You know, do something. And don't forget the shoe boxes. Those are important. They really are. Don't forget to get involved in that. We, there's not near what we'd like to have. And it's just $25. I don't want to make a box either. That's not my thing. But they'll take your money and do it for you. <laughs> Amen. So why don't you just go out there and just give them a few dollars and let them make a box and send it to those kids over in Haiti. You know, it's such a blessing to them. I mean, it really is. Can you imagine if you had nothing, absolutely nothing, and here came a box full of goodies? Being a child, how incredible that would be. So I want to encourage you to do that. Father, we just thank you and praise you. You're good and wonderful. <laughs> we thank you for all that you've done for us tonight. You're so faithful. And Lord, I pray that you bless these people, God, that you let your face shine on them stronger than ever before, God, as they're walking in light and being carriers of the light and darkness, God, that you would strengthen their heart, that they would stand. And Father God, that you would fill their mouths with your words. When it's time to speak, they'll speak. Lord, when it's just time to shine, they'll shine. And I thank you, Lord, that they're going to win their communities to Jesus. They're going to win the, the workplace to Jesus just by walking in your light and letting the love of God shine through them. And I thank you, God, that we are one. I'm declaring it. I speak it out that we are one. We are one as you and the Father are one. And you are one in us and we are one in you. And God, that we are one functioning body marching out into a dark world, bringing the light of life of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed.